Hey students, in this video I'd like to go over the creation of linear and rotary patterns of features. Let's start off by drawing a block, as we always do. So I'm going to start a new sketch. I'll draw a rectangle at the origin. I'll smart dimension it. I think I'll make mine three inches wide, or excuse me, four inches wide three inches tall. I'll say OK, exit the sketch, extrude it. There we go. So I have a nice piece of metal. Now I'm going to start a new sketch to create a punch out. I'll draw a rectangle on the face. Now I need to smart dimension that rectangle. These planes are kind of getting in the way, so let's turn those off. So I'll hit View, Hide and Show, and I'll turn the planes off. I haven't deleted them, I've just made them invisible and unselectable. Okay, now let's go back to our smart dimensioning. So I'm going to click on the edge, and I'll say 0.375. So I'm locating my rectangle on the face, and then I'm going to dimension the actual size of it. Oops. Okay, my sketch is fully defined. So I will exit it and I'll do an extrude cut. I'm going to make this a through all in order to create my ventilation grate. I'll say OK. There. Now, what I'd like to do is I'm going to do a linear pattern. I'm going to choose my first direction, which will be the X direction for the pattern. I'll choose direction 2, which will be my Y direction. And I immediately see something went wrong. All of SOLIDWORKS' proposed solutions are off the metal. So I'm going to flip those. Then bring the interval down by adjusting D1. Let's just go with an interval of one inch. And that looks pretty good. Now I'll come down here. Under D2, let's make this 0.75 inches. And let's increase the number of instances. Again, I see it's going in the wrong direction. So I'm going to come up and I'll reverse my direction. Now I have my pattern completely on the part. If my cut extrude had not been automatically selected or selected before I began the command, I would come down here to Features and Faces. This is where I can tell SOLIDWORKS which feature I want replicated. So my linear pattern looks good. I think I'll accept that. And now I have nine cutouts, all done with very simple sketches. Our original block was only four lines, and then the original cutout was also only four lines. But it created all these faces. If I want to change it for whatever reason, I can go back and change the original sketch. So if I change the original punch out to 0.5, exit the sketch, they all update. If I'd like to change the number of rows or columns, I can do that right under the linear pattern option. So for example, I could make D1 smaller, and I could increase the number of rows. 
you know, my lipo battery just charged. SolidWorks did not do that. Okay, so that's how you do a linear pattern. You can also do it with bosses. So if I had a protrusion, I could make a whole bunch of dimples on this plate. But this is a good example of how to do a linear pattern, in this case, of a cutout. So let's delete the pattern. And I'm going to delete the original instance. and the sketch that made it. And let's try doing a rotary version and see how that works. So I'm going to choose the face that I want to put a hole on. Let's see, I will choose a common drilled hole. Now I go down through my menus, anti-inch, all drill sizes. Let's say I want to put a hole, center hole in there that's three quarters of an inch in diameter. Half inch, nope, need to go down some more, five eighths, three quarters. Very good. And that looks good, so I'll go to my positions tab. Place my initial feature on, and now I will locate it. Two. Smart dimension. Five. There. Now I have a hole in the center of my part. And let's say I want to create a bolt circle around the perimeter of that hole. First thing I'm going to do is put in another hole that, that I'm going to pattern. This hole is going to just create the center of revolution. So again, I'll click the face, the hole wizard. I'll go with a plain drilled hole. And let's see, I would like a quarter inch hole. There is quarter inch. There it is. Go down through. Everything looks good in the menus. Put it on the screen. Again, I have to smart dimension it. So I'm going to go from the center of the hole. So let's see, I'll make it an inch up. And I'm going to find it hard to do a horizontal dimension in this. I'm going to accept that position. I'm just going to drag that hole over a little bit, just to make things a little easier. I'll click on the edge, the center of the hole, make it zero. OK. And I'll finally accept my hole. Now I want to create the actual circular pattern. I'll hit the drop down. I'll go to circular pattern. The first item I need to address is direction one. What am I revolving about? Where's my center? So I'll click in the box. I'm going to choose this edge. You can see immediately it goes to the default of three instances. I can change the number of instances. Let's say I want five. By turning on equally spaced, for five instances, all of the occurrences are 72 degrees apart. Down below, we see features and faces. This is determining what is going to go into the circular pattern. It happens to be correct. I do want my quarter inch hole. So I can say OK. And now, magically, five holes will appear. So that's how you do linear and circular patterning. Thank you for watching.